Cradle yeah. Point acquires Aircom. I yeah. mean, what does this mean for private 5G and security? Well, you know, it's interesting. The timing was uh, was serendipitous. Um, I had published a Forbes article talking about Ericsson's private 5G journey with Cradle Point just last week, and then this news broke. And from my perspective. 5G has a lot of different superpowers. And in fact, at some point, I need to do some video recordings on this. Yeah. Um, latency, throughput, device support. But one of its superpowers is encryption. And so there are dramatic improvements in the 5G new radio standard over LTE from an encryption standpoint. But that's not going to do uh, everything that needs to be done. Um, with the growing momentum around open RAN, disaggregation of the radio access network, that's increasing the threat surface, and so more needs to be done. So what I like about this, acquisi this acquisition in Ericom, and I was pre-briefed on it. In fact, um, I provided some insight um, in the Ericsson and Cradle Point press release. But what I like about it, Ericom is a cloud security provider. And what, what that functionality is going to do is improve what Cradle Point was already doing from an SD-WAN and SASE perspective. Um, there was a recent announcement between T-Mobile and Cradle Point along those lines. Uh, for T-Mobile for Business and um, leveraging the Cradle Point router to do that. But what's what's really, really interesting is that um, this is a multi-domain. So obviously it's cloud-based. Cradle Point is calling it its net cloud threat defense feature. And it's uh, multi-domain from the perspective that um, it can support fixed site, remote worker, in-vehicle, and IoT use cases. And what's interesting about in-vehicle, Cradle Point a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago, announced a really cool, highly integrated router antenna system for first responders. And I believe it's being deployed within the AT&T FirstNet um, deployment. And so this is great timing from my perspective from, um, from, from Cradle Point. And it provides that needed support for those, for those SD-WAN and SASE uh, deployments, as well as zero trust. So. So we're, what's the status, let's say, of private 5G, Will? I mean, heck. When I think you were at Compaq, which maybe have been HP, you you were working on um, 3G yes. types, of, types of programs there. And then when 4G and LTE came out, it was, hey, private 4G, baby, right here, here, here we go. And I'm just curious, what, what, um, what's the status of it? I mean, is this a real thing? I see more automakers in Germany talking about yeah. uh, private 5G. Than, than let's say the enterprise? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, Pat. I think there, there are two things in play here. And to answer your question very succinctly, um, it's not taken off to the degree that people would have expected, but I think there are two things that are going on there. One, it's the access to license spectrum or the democratization of license spectrum. We've seen that in the US with CBRS and ONGO, but Europe and Asia have been slower to adopt similar um, you know, clearinghouses and that sort of thing to provide license spectrum to municipalities directly, um, to, to you know, educational institutions, to healthcare institutions. So that's primarily, um, I think, one of the inhibitors. Um, secondly, there are many different routes to market with, with private 5G. So you can do it like um, what, what Cradle Point does, sort of in a box solution. Solana does the same thing where you get the radio and the core all together and the access points. Then you have as a service from the likes of Cisco yeah. and, and NHPE, right? And so I think because there's so many different routes to market and this is so new for enterprises, this isn't Wi-Fi. Cellular is an entirely different animal. Um, Wi-Fi you know, leverages unlicensed spectrum, but you've got to have licensed spectrum in place to do it. So I think those are the two inhibitors. So. I, I am seeing, you know, proof of concepts. We, we are going to talk about NTT later in the podcast, and I think that's a that's a great example of how things are beginning to sort of break apart, and and we're headed in the right direction. But but to be honest with you, yeah, it's it's been slow going, but I do expect that momentum to pick up over time. 